It's my pleasure to introduce our next performer. But first, here's a trivia question for you. How many churches in Montgomery County do not have the Poet Laureate for Montgomery County as their member? <laughs> All of them. That's right, except us. Introducing the Poet Laureate of Montgomery County. Our very own Hallie Moore, who has been blessing us for years with her literary excellence, her meditative guidance, and her sage wisdom. <laughs> Rusty, Rusty wrote that. She has recently published a new book of poems, which I'm sure she'll tell you about. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Hallie Moore. <laughs> Thank you, you can hear me. After you've thoroughly embarrassed me, thank you. <laughs> well, I represent quite a community here. In fact, we have so many fabulous wordsmiths in this congregation that I can barely count them. We love the spoken, the written, the ha-ha word. We just love, we're, we're yakkers, we're just yakkers. So that's who I am, and I would cautiously say that you're all poets, whether you know it or not. And I'm not going to tell you because your feet show it. You know that old show joke. Um, the Greek root, poet, poesia, how do I say that, Tuckies? <laughs> uh, it means maker. So all of us who are makers are poets. Okay, so guys, we're all legitimately guilty together. We'll keep that. I've got three or four poems, four or five poems, 892 poems to read to you tonight, so sit back. <laughs> the first one, these are kind of heavy poems, I have, to, I have to warn you. They were written during the lockdown. They were written when I was basically pissed off. So some of them are a little heavy. I ask you to bear with me. Uh, some of them are very much devoted to the events of this evening, to why we are here. And the first one I'm going to read is A Name. That's the title, A Name. And it's for all those, this is to Angel Reach clients primarily. So it's to all those babies that are born in harsh situations, born to struggling mothers, and to the babies who will grow up in foster care, to the babies that end up aging out of foster care. So this poem is in the voice of one of those young pregnant mothers. It's called A Name. And this is her prayer. When I walk this world, I want armor. I want my child to have armor, not Kevlar or some samurai sword swung on a hip. You know, when I forget the dark quarrels that brings this child into the world, when I forget our last drunken night, hear the first heartbeat, the sonar wand sliding over my belly, I feel my Amazon mama rising, and every outraged woman who is pregnant is singing to my baby, we will survive. I lie back on the examining table, connect with the wind rush swish of the placenta world and conjure magic names. Not the multi-named monikers of royals, generations of Charlottes and Williams. Not the gamer's avatar contrived by a website generator. True name armor, my friend the name that pushes crippling terror out of the nightmare, a name to shout at the selfish grasping hand, a name that can yell, I am hungry, I am worthy, know me. Each month I choose a name, write it on white paper in black ink, rest it gently in an olive wood box. My belly swells and I write names, each a power an open sesame, an Ishmael, the burning bush I am. That'll shut you up, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Uh, in 1970, Earth Day was established. Today's Earth Day, guys. In 1997, a very brave young woman named Julia Hill, Julia Butterfly Hill, chose to be the person that said, I'll do it, because at that point, I'm going to say it, a Texas owner of a large stand of old growth timber in Humboldt County in California had a debt that he wanted to pay off. So he said, oh, let's just clear cut this stuff here in Humboldt County. We'll get rid of this and I can pay my money. I'll get my money and I'll pay my debt. Well, there were some activists there that were saying, no, you won't. And so they were surrounding the trees that were about to be cut down. And this one particular tree, they figured is about a thousand years old and the chainsaws were coming. And so the activists were there to do something. And this young woman who'd gone there, she wasn't really a member of the crew. She just said, well, we need somebody to do this. You know, who's going to sit up in that tree and keep them from cutting it down? She said, I will. I will. So this is a poem to her on Earth Day. 738 days in the redwood named Luna for tree sitter, Julia Butterfly Hill. Sharp-eared forest dwellers say, you must crouch as low as a thimble-sized mouse. Tuck the thread of your mousy tail around your imaginary pink feet and listen hard to hear a redwood song. They say it's the planet's pulse, the oldest dance beat, the mix of cricket chorus, hungry bear growl, and bee buzz slinging itself through the woods. After many nights, the tree sitter heard it, a hallowed hum, a duet with her heartbeat, the song of this giant tree, of this grandmother who holds earth's melody in her heart wood rings. And she heard the chainsaw winding in D minor, all black keys ripping discord through the forest, through millennia of floods and sun sizzle, drowning out bass notes, beheading heaven-reaching sopranos, leaving roots groaning off key in a song called Choking Back Tears. Don't clap. <laughs> she saved the tree. They saved the tree. It's now covered by um, a group called the Sanctuary group and they have a space around that tree it's not the whole forest I mean they cut some of these things down and if you have more information I'd love to hear it but they've got like 200 feet or something like that out in around it yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, please. just a quick reminder the silent auction closes at 8 30 so you might want to check make sure you have the winning bid on that Special item. Thank you. Good. You have 15 minutes, guys. No, you have 13. OK, let's just shift gears a bit. Um, here's a bit of history. It's art history. OK. Um, some of you like art. <laughs> and the piece of art that I'm describing is not in the room. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there's a group of artists called the Pre-Raphaelites. These are British painters who group together to be snarky about the current painting style. And they wanted to go back to the style that was before Raphael. They wanted to go back to the 14th century painted classical painters. So they called themselves the Pre-Raphaelites. And you've seen these paintings, I'm sure, even though you didn't label them as such, but the, the women are lush, their hair is golden, they're swathed in these lovely gowns and stuff. Right? Anyway, they're beautiful. So this is to one of those models. This poem is about one of the models. Her name, well, I'll be just read it. Timeless Fire, after Fanny Cornforth, a pre-Raphaelite model. The tick and talk of it all, no matter. Her fire has not cooled. Our eyes still burn with her beauty alive centuries ago. Her red hair, volcanic, erupting from the crown, fanning out a hot flow over her ears, her shoulders obscured by this angel fire, melting iron and earth. Each brushed curl 
the artist's foreplay. We want to stroke its auburn waves. An itinerant blacksmith's daughter, this is a quote, no charm of reading, education, or intellect. Up there on the wall, transformed into a bland face Arthurian lady, wrapped in yards of translucent cloth, a Celtic sash angling her breasts. She stares out, a mannequin for lush robes, a pomegranate cocked in one hand. Her claim, a patrician nose, an unquestioning mind, and oh my, the hair. Oh my, oh my. Well, I have a couple more. Uh, this one's a rant. I've read it before with people. And it, uh, I offer it to the NAACP crowd that is here. I'm a member, by the way. This one was written in um, 2020, in that March on Washington, when it got so nasty with the police and the Black Lives Matter marching. Black Lives Matter, summer of 2020. I want to get down on my knees on the gritty asphalt on the stinking heat of DC and pray and pray and pray. One knee isn't enough, two knees aren't enough. I will become a Muslim, throw my prayer rug down and lie prone in front of the faceless weaponized police. I will pray like a Hasidic with side curls, phylacteries strapped to my forehead and left arm as I sway at the wailing wall of this country. I will pray. I will pray, both arms raised to Jesus, testifying, I am saved by the blood of Christ. Sing out until I am hoarse and keep singing. And if I am silenced once again, I will meditate in the street with my Buddhist brothers, my Hindu sisters, my agnostic and atheist mothers and fathers. I will pray until some deity hears me and leaps from the clouds with fire and indignation to wrap her arms around the haters and the lovers and squeeze their pain and suspicions into one shared passion. And if you ask, you know, why do I catalog all the faiths? Just remember you use, we're the ones who pray to whom it may concern. <laughs> yep. My last one. Okay, let me make you feel better. <laughs> um, this is entitled, You Can't Have It All. You can't have it all. But you can have your dog's velvet tongue hanging over his grin after your run through black back fields. You could have a finger of sweat draw its hot tip down your cheeks to your chin. You can stand in the sun while that barking dog jumps straight off the ground and plants a wet kiss on your lips. You can lie flat in the buffalo grass. Let that dog drop its weight across your chest, melt its fur and rock with his breath he pants, you rock. He pants, you rock. You rock and rock and rock. Thank you.